Good morning, students. My name is Joseph Okok, and welcome to our today's lesson. That is a continuation from the previous one, and on the power loss in the transmission. Now, during transmission, there is power loss. Why do we have this power loss? Power can be lost when the current is very high, and it can be lost due to the resistance. So, to minimize this, power loss, power is transmitted in such a way that voltage becomes high and current becomes low. According to the formula, power loss or power dissipated is equal to I squared R, whereby I is the current and R is the resistance. So, from this expression, if current is low, then it means the power loss will be very low. But if the current is high, then the power loss is going to be high. So, for convenient transmission, current must be transmitted at a lower value so that power loss is minimized. <coughs> Again, high voltage transmission reduces current through stepping up of voltage. This simply means we increase the voltage to some higher value and we reduce the current to some lower value. By that, we will have less power loss. Power losses during transmission is minimized using thick cables and since these thick cables offer low resistance and in this case aluminum, aluminum is preferred because it possesses the qualities above. One, it has got low resistance and it's also a good conductor. Another advantage is that the aluminum is light in weight and again they are cheap in terms of cost. We have some worked examples from what we have done previously. For example, the resistance of a length of power transmission cable is 10 ohms and is used to transmit 11 kilovolts at a current of 1 ampere. If this voltage is stepped up to 160 kilovolts by a transformer, determine the power loss during transmission. This is the solution to that problem. One of the assumptions we are going to make is that the transformer is 100% efficient. In other words, there is no power loss. Then we have power input being equal to power output. Remember, the transformer is 100% and there is no power loss. So it means the power that comes in is the power that goes out. This is summarized in the formula below. VPIP is equal to VSIX. In other words, voltage at the primary coil times current at the primary coil is equal to the product of the voltage and current in the second coil. Then substituting the values at that level, we have the current being equal to 0 0.069 amperes. And that is the solution to that problem. We have the formula power loss is equal to I R squared. I squared times R. Remember previously we got I to be current to be 0 0.069. So we multiply that by the resistance, which is 10 ohms, and the solution gives us 0 0.048 watts. This is the power loss, and as you can see, it is very, very minimal since the current is very low. If the power is transmitted at 11 kilovolts and the current at 1 ampere, then power loss is simply going to be I squared times R, which is 1 squared times 10, giving us 10 watts. So you can see the difference between this example and the other one. In the previous one, the power loss is 0 0.048 watts. But in this case, the power loss is 10 watts, which is very high as compared to the previous example. Since in this example, current is large, creating large amount of power loss. If the power 
Another assignment for the students is on the screen. A generator produces 660 kilowatts at a voltage of 10 kilovolts. The voltage is stepped up to 132 kilovolts and the power transmitted through cables of resistance 200 ohms to a step down transformer in a substation, assuming that both transformers are 100% efficient. That is the assignment that you are going to do. The current produced by the generator, you are supposed to calculate that. Also, you are supposed to calculate the current that flows through the transmission cables, the voltage drop across the transmission cables, the power loss during transmission, and the power that reaches the substation. Next, briefly, let us look at the domestic wiring. This is the wiring that is done at our residential houses. Power is normally supplied at 240 volts, that is from our local substation transformers. In domestic consumption, for step down, sorry, from a step down transformer, the electric power enters our home through two wires, namely the neutral wire, which is normal, <coughs> the neutral wire up at the transformer, and the returns, the wires that return the power back to the transformer. In other words, there are normally two cables. One is the neutral wire and the other one is the live wire. Neutral wire normally carries, neutral wires carries electricity. It is maintained at zero potential by the connecting to the up at power stations. It provides the return path to the current from the appliances. Then we have the live wire. It is the wire at a high potential. It carries power from the transformer to the house or the appliance. The potential of this wire changes from positive to the negative positive to the negative, again negative to positive, 50 times per second, in other words, 50 hertz. The voltage in these wires is 240 volts, and these wires are normally red in color or brown. This is to distinguish it from the neutral wire. The chart below shows the domestic wiring. As you can see, we have the local transformer substation where the power is being channeled to the authority fuse box. From this point, we have the meter where the power consumed is read at this point. From here, this power is channeled to the consumer fuse box. And within the consumer fuse box, we have the following. One, we have the lighting circuit at 5 amperes. We have the water heater at 25 amperes, 30 amperes to the cooker, again another 30 amperes to the power point. Then we have the neutral bus bar and we have the up bus bar. Up to that point we come to the end of our lesson. We are going to meet next to proceed to the next level. Till then, good morning.